Hey y'all, thanks for joining me. My name's Sherry Beatty. I'm owner of Crow's Nest Calls. Uh, if you're tuning into this video, it's obvious that uh, you've bought one of my calls and want to know how to blow a crow. Well, let me give you a little tour. Uh, I'm right back here in my uh, cabin on the greens, as I called it, where it all started, oh goodness, 20 years ago. It's been fun. Anyway, a few little basics that I use is uh, inexpensive. Bushnell binoculars, 12 by 50 binoculars. What I look for in any optics that I get is that 50 millimeter. The 50 millimeter is, is incredible light gathering from the moon. So I can basically, in the right moon conditions, uh, hunt without artificial lighting. Another thing I have my uh, gun here equipped with is an inexpensive Bushnell banner. What's nice about this is it also has the 50 millimeter objectives, which is incredible. So from half moon to full moon, uh, I'm pretty much scanning the fields in slow motion with my binoculars. The minute I see something, up comes my gun, and I'm ready for the shot. Snow cover, I've got pretty much quarter moon all the way through to full moon uh, with that 50 millimeter light gathering. Um, my gun, a lot of people ask, this is... A Winchester Model 70 and it has been overhearted by my good friend Bobby Hart. I uh, put a beautiful barrel on there and did a little trigger work and painted my wooden stock and uh, now I've got one fancy fancy machine. It was uh, a used gun when I bought it and like I said that's been 20 years ago. So Bobby overhearted it uh, a few years back and I'm still using it. So anyway, what I do is uh, I pretty much travel all over the country, call them coyotes in for people. And so I've seen coyotes, I've seen different behaviors, I've seen different techniques that people use. My technique that I have found that has worked for me is mouth calls. So I've got this really sweet lanyard and that's by Final Approach. And you can get their lanyard, finalapproach.com. It's uh, made for duck and goose hunting, so it floats. But what I like about it is you can carry four calls on it, and it does not cut the back of your neck. So that's my sweet little accessory. And my calls. What I have is Will and Wabbit. That is my rabbit call. Casino Crow. That's my crow call. And then I have my two-in-one double dog Daria. I dare you to try this call. What's nice about it is you can use it in closed reposition or flip the top off and have it in open read condition. So what I do is I have a closed read and I have an open read so I'm ready for different calls and I'll show you the, the little scenarios here. I found that the coyotes back here, you really got to work at it to try and get them to come in. Um, we'll have the bobcat come in first because they're pretty much uneducated. They're uh, here in Pennsylvania. They're not hunted heavily yet. We just started a few years back getting a regular season for them. So they're not real educated. Then you'll have the fox. And then, and finally then, you'll have the coyotes. I've given each stand roughly about 45 minutes before I get up and move to another stand. I know a lot of calls out there on the market say, if you don't hear anything within 20 minutes, get up and move. I have been busted so many times at that 20 minute mark, 30 minute mark, 40 minute mark just by being too anxious. Patience has been a really important part in coyote hunting. Uh, watching your movement and watching the wind. So they, are, they have been three very important things that I've tried to keep to. So what I do when I start coyote hunting is I want to give these coyotes a scenario, a ticket to a movie that they've never seen before. I want to whet their appetite and I want to make them come in. So let's start here. We'll take your closed read, two-in-one double dog daria, and bark. To bark on this, you can either go <coughs> or closing it off. <coughs> so I'm just going inside the call. Or <coughs> huffs, so you can do it either way. Growling, you can do your drum roll with your tongue. Just do that in the end for the growling. 
and keeping your hand over and giving it different tones. That's your growling. So bark, growl. Have your open read. You can also bark on this. You can howl. You can do your yelps. You can do your estrus chirps. Just high pitched chirping. So, your howling, how to practice with that is take a popsicle stick or if you have one of these calls, get your open read out and just kind of play around with it. Kind of go up and down and get used to where your tones are and how far you can go before you cut it off. Okay. Very little pressure. Okay. So work with that and get familiar with that. <clears throat> hey everybody. We're back here with the uh, Estrus Chirping. You have your open recall. You want to be on the farthest end that's going to give you the highest pitch chirping. It's uh, known that uh, the female coyotes, when they're in heat, when they're choosing their mate, when they're calling, when they're in the mood, uh, this is the sound that they're going to protrude. Now, I have heard this out here at night, and it's it's been incredible. The first time I heard it, it's like, where's that bird chirping? But here it goes. It's just a quick tooting on the end of your call. Make sure you have your lip position on there. Slightly. Um, I've never heard a coyote do it over four times, so, you know, one time, two times, up to four. It's up to you. Whatever you do with your calls and your sounds, regardless, keep it real. So, anyway, that is your estrus chirp. So, it's high-pitched chirping on the end of your call. Now, I always have my crow call. Uh, another name that people know me by is Crow Woman. I have uh, been gifted that name, and I'm very proud of it. I don't hunt crows, but I use the crows to hunt coyotes with. You know, if you watch these crows when you're out there hunting, they're pretty much the first things that's, that's going to give you away in the woods. But if you can learn to use them, and they'll be a handy guide. I can pretty much watch the crows, listen to their vocalizations, and watch them go from treetop to treetop and tell pretty much what's gone through the woods and where it's going to come out of. So I always have my crow because those coyotes out there know that those crows know where the food is. The crows got the bird's eye view. So I either portray that I'm a crow or attract the crow's attention so that I can pique the interest of a coyote. So it's very simple. Ah, ah. Little bite plate. Do your drum roll again <laughs> to do your feeding frenzy. a little bit harder to do your more aggressive crow <coughs> or you can do this tone <coughs> that's my crow call so I can get crows I can get crows excited if you can hear that anyway I also have my dying rabbit my whale and wabbit call it is my dying rabbit distress call now people ask, how hard do you blow? Do you blow soft? Do you blow whatever? I tell them, envision yourself out there in the woods and all of a sudden a bear comes up and bites you on the leg. Are you gonna say, oh, Mr. Bear, that hurts, please let go. No, you're gonna scream bloody murder. So I put those same emotions into my calls and I've heard rabbits being killed out here by the coyotes, so I pretty much know how long to go. Once again, you keep it real. That's it. Now, having all these calls and all these sounds and getting a little idea of what you're going to do, my scenario. We'll start off barking like a male coyote is over there and he barks once. <coughs> Female coyote answers back over here. <coughs> he barks again. <coughs> all of a sudden, a crow supposedly hears that there's two coyotes out there and wants to let everyone know. <coughs> that 
That scares a rabbit supposedly out of a brush, and he runs across the field. <coughs> Coyotes are in big pursuit of this rabbit. <coughs> they got the kill. Now, two coyotes start fighting over this rabbit. One coyote gets injured and runs off. That's it. So within 30 to 45 seconds, I've given them a scenario, something that would normally, naturally happen out there in the woods. That's how I blow a crow. Hope you've enjoyed this little video clip, and it's been nice talking with you, and y'all have a good day. Be safe hunting. Oh. Don't forget to take a youth. They're our future. Thanks. Bye.